there's so many different opportunities for founders to get featured, whether it's product or a business, uh, a service-based business. So just break it down for me a little bit for the people who are listening, they're new to PR. Um, what are the differences between some of the things that you'll see like um, a staff writer versus an editor or a contributor or a freelancer? What do we need to know as founders when we're pitching to different types of writers? Right. First, I want to say that this is tricky. So you can read an article from a website and see an author and say, oh, that's a writer for, you know, for them. I'm going to find their email, which is a great start. But sometimes that writer is a freelancer or their staff or they're an editor. So it's kind of going to play an important role figuring out which one. I worked as a freelancer for quite some time. And I know that even when I love a story, sometimes I can't cover it even after pitching to a few different places, because as a freelancer, you're not staffed. You know, you're not emailing somebody that actually works for that publication. So when an editor sees them pitch, they're kind of like, mm, I'll get a staff writer to cover it. And so that freelancer might get bumped for someone else or something else, you know, for a different topic. Whereas if you pitch a staff writer, then they might have a little bit more influence because they're on the payroll and they can kind of say, hey, to their editor that they work with every day, I would like to cover this. And that kind of relationship will continue. Not to knock freelancers, because I'll tell you one thing, we defy odds. Um, so sometimes if we're really passionate and we can pitch to a bunch of outlets, that staff writer can only pitch to their outlet. Um, and then editors probably are the most powerful in this game because they control you know, which content goes in and which content doesn't. Um, so if you can pitch an editor, that's great. But again, they're limited to that one publication, whereas freelancers have their pick, pick of the world. Um, so it's really important to remember those things and don't be afraid to ask someone. I think generally as writers, we're, we want to be very honest and say, hey, I will try to pitch this or hey, I can you know, get this. So don't be afraid. So freelancers and contributors, they're not on staff, so they, it's, like a, it's like a second level of pitching where you pitch them and then they, they pitch to, to the, uh, the publication. Whereas if you pitch someone who's on staff, that's only one level of pitching, right? Right, because no matter what, the writers have to go through the editors. Um, mm -hmm. So whether it's freelance or staff writer, they're going to have to send an email or make a call to the editor and say, hey, you know, does this sound cool? But the editor's going to have the final choice. Now, what about the, the kind of levels of pitching? Is it okay to pitch the editor and their staff reporter at the same time? Are you going to know that I pitched you or it's fine because you get hundreds of emails and it's not really a big deal? Hmm, that's a really good question. I would say there's no harm in pitching both um, because sometimes editor, you know, they, they get the most emails, they get the most pitches. So editors are overwhelmed. So even if they end up loving, loving your product or your pitch, they might completely miss it. Whereas staff writer, they might not have as many pitches. So they're like, oh, I found this. I'm going to bring it to my editor. And then editor can either say, oh, I like this, or they might even look back in their emails and say, oh, I glanced at this and I almost missed it. So um, go ahead and, and do both. I would say, you know, don't get carried away. Like if you find lots of emails from one publication, just limit it to maybe three at the most, just because you don't, you know, that might be a little bit hounding for people, but uh, I think that's safe to say.